This is Sarah from Mixam, and in this tutorial I will be explaining how to set up page spreads and discuss how these images may be impacted by the spine gutter area for some of our products. You can set up a page spread or two pages next to each other in most programs. The reason you may want to set up pages this way is because your artwork goes across two pages or you want to see the layout of the book when it is opened. You can set up spreads in one of two ways by creating one large page in your design program or by using an option called facing pages. For the first option, we first need to calculate the width of your page. If you want your finished book size to be 8.5 by 11, for example, then your final spread size should be 17 inches by 11 inches without bleed. With bleed, which is required for any images or background colors that meet the edge of the page, then the final size would be 17.25 inches by 11.25 inches with the 0.125 inch bleed that we require for most products aside from hardcover books. If you want to learn more about bleed, please check out our bleed and printing and why you need it video. The second option is to use facing pages. In InDesign, this option appears next to where you input your width and height measurements for your project. In this case, the width and height of our page is 8.5 by 11. We select facing pages next to it on the right hand side and then scroll down to the section labeled bleed and slug. Here we input the 0.125 inch measurement on all four sides to add our bleed area. Now you can see that our first page is by itself on the right. This is where your interior pages start. On the right hand side with the left hand side, which is currently blank, being your inner front cover. For paperback books, you can print on the inner front and back covers, so you're welcome to add your corresponding inner covers together at the beginning like so. Select all pages in the page window and right or double click. There should be two checked options. You will want to unselect both. Allow document pages to shuffle and allow selected spreads to shuffle. Once that is done, in the same window, you can click and drag the page to create a spread. This should be your inner front cover on the left, with page one being on the right. At the end of the book, it would be your last page on the left and your inner back cover on the right. This, of course, would be opposite if you are binding your book from right to left. For hardcover books, we cannot print on the inner front and back cover, so the facing page layout should remain as is, as that is where your end paper would go. You can also supply your inner covers with your front and back cover if that makes more sense design-wise. Now, with spreads, there can be an issue with the image going across the center seamlessly. This is common for our hardcover glue-bound books or our non-sewn bound books and our perfect bound paperback books. Because we are gluing these pages together, a small area in the center of the spread will not be visible in the final print. We mark this area with a purple highlighted box once you upload your artwork online. This area is about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters, and you should keep any important content or images out of this area. To have everything centered, we suggest keeping content away from the spine by at least half an inch or 12 millimeters, and away from the edge of the page by at least a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. You are welcome to try to offset your artwork from the center to get a more seamless transition across the spread. Our staple bound and hard covers with a sewn binding do not have this issue as the books can be opened completely flat. Depending on your project, this may not be an issue, but it should be something to be aware of when you are designing your book. Once your spreads are ready, export as a PDF in either pages or spreads. Both will upload to our system without issue. You are welcome to upload one PDF with all your pages in a single PDF file or multiple PDF files whichever is easiest for you. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or need any assistance, please contact our customer support members who would be happy to walk you through the process and help answer any of your questions. They are available by email, phone, and through the messages tab of your order. Until next time!